Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. We're comparing the King James Version of the Bible with the ESV Version in the book of Acts. And so we'll see there are substantial differences, doctrinal differences, and every word of God is pure. A lot of people always say, why don't you do that from the Greek and all this? Because what, 99 percentile of people out there don't speak Greek. So you're reading English Bibles. And secondly, so we're seeing real world look at this. And also, it's just representative usually of what's in the Greek language. And so we're showing that they're based on really two radically different Greek manuscripts. So thanks for being here. Do check out our other videos, especially on this topic. I've got a lot of Bible comparisons, everything from the Bishop's Bible and the King James, on and on and so forth. So we're in um, 28.16 of the book of Acts. I've got my trusty Publix uh, magnifying glass out here. 2816. So this is how it reads in the King James Version. I think we're going to see there's 11 words that are omitted in the ESV and most modern translations. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Now occasionally they'll leave those type words in. So we're going to see if the ESV does this. The LSB we've been doing kind of simultaneously has been leaving a few more words in than the uh, ESV. And when we came to Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. So you can see it's substantially shorter. Satan's a thief. He comes and steals the words of God. When you really get into it, which I've done a lot of videos really getting into it, and there's a lot more information out there, especially Will Kinney, Jack Norman, those guys have done a great job on that. So let's turn over to Acts 24.15 that... Uh, you can go with me if you so want to. 2415. We're using this handy dandy Bible comparison chart by Dial the Truth Ministries. It's a couple hundred. KJB Apostolics has another great Bible chart that's based on this. They got permission to do that from these good folks, Terry Watkins. And also on Terry Watkins' website, he's got 300. I almost just used his website because it's a lot easier for me to read than that. Pull it up on my iPad. I've done that before, but we'll just do this. So 24, and let me make sure I'm reading the right one. 24, 15, 24, 15. Another thing is like the ESV and many others are in paragraph form. So sometimes it's a little hard to find where it says. So having a hope in God, which these men themselves accept, that there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. So let's see what 2415 says in the King James Version. That was the ESV. And again, I think you might see there are some substantial differences there. And they have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. So uh, be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. Resurrection of the dead is missing. And so people say, well, that doesn't sound like too big of a deal. Well, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Luke 4, 4, unless you got a new translation, that's missing. Every word of God. Um, 23 and 9, I believe that is. Yep. 23 and 9. We'll start out in the ESV again. And I think the book of Acts may take us just a couple of sessions here. We just appreciate you so much being here. This is important. We want a Bible with all the words in it. It's not 110% in the King James. It's the real words of God. Then a great clamor arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees party stood up and contended sharply. We find nothing wrong in this man. What if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? So that is in the ESV. That is 23 and 9. We'll go to the King James. This is my handy dandy King James large print Cambridge. One of the best Bibles out there in my opinion for reading. And there arose a great cry and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And so... Uh, let us not fight against God. Let's see if that was in the ESV. Let's see if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, 23 and 9. 
What if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? And that's where it ends. Let us not fight against God. That harkens back to Gamaliel's advice. So it's just missing in your ESV. And so it's not just all these missing entire verses. It's not just the NIV 64,000 words shorter than the King James, removing you know the equivalent of entire many entire books of the Bible, but because there's only like 789,000 plus words in the Bible. But um, just as you're reading along, and a lot of times even what's there will mean different. So I think this is just incontrovertible that they're different. A lot of people say, well, they're just easier to read. No, they're uh, different. Now, the next one is Acts 20, 24. It's a very famous statement of the Apostle Paul. Acts 20 and 24. Acts 20 and 24. If I read this right. But I do not count my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So let's look up uh, 2024 here in the King James. Now, a lot of these errors, they were intentional errors, even going back to the first century. I guess that's almost universally acknowledged except by one prominent Bible critic. But I mean, everybody who studied objectively knows that 2 Corinthians 2.17 and other writings said they were changing it in the first century. Some are just errors. They just didn't get it right as far as they just missed. They uh, didn't do it. Some were unintentional errors. So 20.24 says, But none of these things move me. But none of these things move me. And that's the part that's missing. But I do not account my life to be of any value. But none of these things move me, neither count on my life dear unto myself. So none of these things move me. Hugely influential passage of Scripture showing the steadfastness of Paul. Many have used that over the years, preached, taught about it, lived it. It's just not in modern translations. Um, 1726 Ken Ham's going to be really disappointed. That's not in here. Hey, before we get there, let's go to Acts 19.35. Acts 19.35. And when and this is the ESV. And when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is a temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell down from the sky? So, 19 and uh, 35 in the King James, and when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, You men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not that the city of Ephesus is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, the image which fell down from Jupiter? Worshiper. It's the one missing. And so, of course, they weren't just temple keepers. They were worshipers of this false deity. We'll do two more for this particular session. And they're both in Acts 17, 26 and 22. Acts 17, 26 and 22. This is Paul on Mars Hill. Again, thanks for being here. 17 and 26. You may want to follow along maybe in some of your other translations. 26 says this and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place so 1726 in the king james and have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth one blood one man of course we believe that in adam but one blood really brings it home so takes you know like Colossians 1 14 is a theological removal of the blood there which is pretty intense but uh, removes the term blood and then 1722 kind of really changes the meaning here 17 and 22 see if we can find it 23 so Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you're very religious. It's kind of a compliment. 
So here's what Paul said in the King James. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. Not very religious, but he's he kind of starts out right in their face. Too superstitious. So you can see huge differences. Check out our other videos in this entire series. Share with your friends, family, church family. Hit the bell notification when you subscribe. We are so thankful you're here. God bless you. We want God's truth in the world. We want you living for God the way Jesus wants us to. Amen. Bye-bye.